boy there, it's Skyward Shield. I am joined today with Bill. Bill, say hello. Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> and on this great edition of Football Talks, we are near the penultimate, uh, the near penultimate uh, of Football Talks of the regular season. We're not there yet, we're two away, or one away. From one more. And then after that, it's Super Bowl. But we now know the two teams who will make the Super Bowl. So let's get on with it. We'll go with the complete blowout first. We're going to go in reverse order. In the AFC Championship, New England Patriots rolling and just absolutely manhandled Indianapolis 45-7. LeGarrette Blunt rushed for over 120 yards, three touchdowns. For a moment, I thought I was watching the the game from Sun uh, that was on Sunday Night Football all those weeks ago. <laughs> oh my God, they just obliterated them. They obliterated the Indianapolis Colts in that game. It, it, it looked like Indianapolis didn't even belong on the same field as New England. Uh, it, it was, it was interesting. It was, it was ugly. I mean, the 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 key thing for me was really early in the game, and was the two drop passes by Dan Heron of the Indianapolis Colts, the running back out of the backfield. Yeah, that could have that could have actually had a little bit of a positive effect for the Colts if he had cap, uh, caught him. It would have gotten into deep into New England territory, and I think that would have that would have made it a, a little bit of a closer game at the beginning because I, I I didn't think they were on the same level as the Patriots at the beginning. I won't lie; I'll tell you which one I thought that one play that was the big mistake, the attempt at the field goal that went yeah, wide the, right. Yeah, they should that, have just punted it. Yeah, because they should have punted. What? No, no, you go ahead. I know that they should have trust. They trust their kicker, and I know he's a Pro Bowl kicker. Which how he got over Dan Bailey, I don't understand. Still, uh, but I, I didn't. I wouldn't trust field goals in that type of weather where it was windy. At near the end of the game, it was gusting at around thirty over thirty miles an hour. Yep. That's how. And that's how ugly the weather was. And then people were saying, oh, Seattle's weather is so hideous today. <laughs> no, not anymore. That was New England. Yeah. It looks It's like New England and Seattle stadiums, traded weather systems. Uh, well, typically, East Coast in the wintertime, especially in Boston area, they they get nor'easters that go straight up that up the East Coast. And if you get hit by a nor'easter, it can have 60, 70 mile an hour winds very easily. And just pouring rain or a blizzard. Imagine if it was snowing, rain. though. Imagine if it was snowing. That's, that that's that would have been a... Uh, uh, that would have been a blizzard. A oh, my God. A white AFC championship. I mean... Seriously, that that would be almost a... The game would have been canceled. I think that it would still have been played, but they would have moved the time up early. Yeah. Uh, so that way that the rain and, or, well, the snow would uh, not hamper the game yeah. as badly. Uh, but overall, I feel like the weather conditions themselves played into the Patriots' hands because, really, what do you need to do when you're in... Oh, come on, other call. What? Uh, no, I had a, uh, I had a, another Skype call call me. Yeah! <laughs> it was in the middle of recording. Okay, but I felt like the... I felt like the, uh... Uh, weather conditions played into New England's favor because of uh, it was wet and what do you need to do when it's raining? You run the football. You oh, yeah. run the football. I think, the, I think the, the commentators were saying that this is perfect football running weather. That's right. I, I mean... And the Garrett Blunt had a fucking field day. 
like I said, 120 over 120 yards rushing and three touch three touchdowns. Uh, if only it was Jonas Gray. I don't think he's gonna stay with the Patriots, Nick, after this year. I just don't you see mean, it happening. I mean, they got Laguerre Blunt. They have Stephen Ridley. They have Shane Vereen. There's only so many spots in that backfield, and really, you never know what Belichick's going to do. You never know. It could be Jonas Gray and LeGarrette Blunt in the Super Bowl. You just have no idea. Yeah. But the other thing that I found very interesting is that the Patriots were just attacking that Colts defense with all these different looks. There was some plays where... There was one guy that was eligible, another guy that was ineligible. There's this guy that's eligible, that guy's not eligible. And can you imagine trying to play defense and trying to see, oh, well, that guy's eligible, that guy's not eligible. And you got to try to account for that while trying to think about this. I mean, it's practically impossible. And that's, that's what happened with that Nate Solder touchdown pass. The offensive lineman. He's an offensive lineman that caught a 20-yard touchdown pass. Yeah. <laughs> I like that final push where he just jumped into the, to the into the end zone. I'm you know the thing that I'm I'm surprised I haven't seen on, you know, like Twitter or something is Nate Solder diving towards the uh, you know, end zone and there's not a table full of food or something in front of him. You know, <laughs> I mean, good God, I'm surprised I haven't seen that, you know. But... I saw a picture of, uh, you know the Colts symbol, not the not the horseshoe, you know the one where there's actually a horse and a guy riding it? Yeah. <laughs> Someone photoshopped Brady on it. <laughs> oh, God. Damn. That, that was a good one. I like that one a lot. Yeah. I mean, overall, that game, uh, it was so... It was so one-sided after one quarter. It was sickening. It, it was 17-7 like at, at, yeah. at halftime. But look at how much it exploded. They got uh, more than double those points. And look at look how it exploded for one. And look how it exploded when it was starting to rain harder. That was when the game started getting really sloppy with all the rain was in the third quarter. Yeah, and I mean, they kept bringing up, which I think the commentators jinxed it for uh, uh, the Colts, how they just overpower teams in the third quarter. No, yep. not this time. They just got absolutely manhandled in the third quarter. I mean, it, it was like watching a college team playing a, a Super Bowl team. You know, it was... It was just utter domination by by a team that no uh, that's been there and has done that mm -hmm. compared to a team that was young and just got there for the first time. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, Bill, do you have anything else to add here? Aside overall, from... I, overall, uh, Belichick is the all-time winningest playoff coach, a genius. A first ballot Hall of Famer. He should always. Uh, he should be in the Hall of Fame now, but you have to wait seven years from whenever you retire. And Tom Brady proved why he's the greatest quarterback of this generation. One of them, because in my mind, still Peyton Manning's the best quarterback I've ever seen. But yeah. Tom Brady is right up there. I say Tom Brady. I know that they got he's got the records. It's always the argument, like, like I've got the records, but I've got the rings. Uh, I'll put it this way. What, what both Brady and Manning have done has revolutionized the game in their own way. Manning more from the play calling at the line of scrimmage and checking into the right play and studying and being ready and being a, a continuing professional and Brady in the in that he's played with these revolutionary systems with a head coach that brings in these geniuses on the offense and geniuses on the defense. I mean, 
Brady's surrounded with greatness, and Manning is greatness. Brady is surrounded by greatness and is great. Manning is just greatness personified, and his greatness rubs on everyone else. Yep. Sad to say, it looks like he probably isn't coming back next year. Could be wrong. I mean, he's, he, no, well, we'll talk about it later, but P. Manning has uh, pulled himself out of the uh, Pro Bowl. Yep. Oh, yep. man. But overall, the, the best thing that I saw was now Ma Brady owns all the playoff records. I mean, he's the best playoff quarterback of all time. And there's no arguing that fact. And the C, uh, well, as we'll see, the Seahawks will have a lot of trouble and a lot of they got a nightmare on their hands and what they're going to try to stop. So mentioning the Seahawks, is this the perfect segue into the next game? Yep. All right. So Green Bay went to Seattle. Looked like they had it all in control. 16 to nothing going into the half. Seattle had three turnovers, two picks by by Russell Wilson and a, and a fumble from a punt return. But at, when the second half came around, it still looked like everything was going to hell for Seattle. And, and Aaron Rodgers' revenge looked near complete. But no, a fake field goal attempt going in for it, which was thrown for a touchdown by the punter. Successful, reignites the, the 12th man, and oh my god, what a photo finish in the last four minutes of the fourth quarter. Going into overtime, then Russell Wilson leads the charge with two consecutive deep balls to win the game in overtime, 28-22. Bill, I still don't know how that all happened, but I know where it all began. That fake field goal, and it was thrown by the punter to that guy, and and I saw that crowd go from dead to re like just reanimated. They're alive again, well again, like nothing ever happened. Yep, the the most energized crowd I've ever seen after one score and your team's game beat down and your quarterback's throwing more picks than he has completions. I mean, seriously, that crowd went absolutely bonkers. And once that crowd got into that game, I felt that the defense uh, to, uh, flipped the switch and turned it on. And they, they were in... Rogers' face, and he wasn't getting, he wasn't getting the looks that he typically does as a as a top flight quarterback. You know, he 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 looked average against that defense. Yeah, he went for quick shots to to uh, players, which were which was successful for the most part. But the Legion of Boom stuck to it. I mean, they did get two picks off of him. Though one yeah. pick led to another pick by Russell Wilson, so that meant <laughs> nothing. Yeah. That was at the beginning, but Bill, there's one other touchdown I want to talk about. The one that t helped take the game into overtime. That one, I believe it was ran in by Marshawn Lynch, who just walked it towards like the last few yards. He just walked right in at the end. And then the two-point conversion. Oh, that two-point conversion. He threw it just, just he threw that thing up for grabs and there is one Seahawk who got it. That had to be the best touchdown drive I had ever seen too because to get a two-point conversion done and it looked like there's no way someone's going to catch this. I mean uh, he threw what Everyone would tell you is an ill-advised pass across his body, across the field, into the end zone, where in any other situation, any other game, any other day, would be an interception and just drop, and would be only a 2019 game. He... It, the most miraculous thing happened in the Green Bay Defender for whatever reason, and 
I mean, that's that's something he'll have to live with for the rest of his life. Which you're it, okay with. Which I'm okay with. I mean, I'm a I'm a <laughs> Detroit Lions fan, so you know what? I, I'm kind I'm kind of used to seeing heartbreak. So I mean, <laughs> to watch to watch the Green Bay Packers go through heartbreak is is very satisfying to me. <laughs> but that pass, I mean, something. I just don't. I don't even know how he caught that. I. There is no reason why he should have caught that m- pass. That, but he did. It looked like the, it looked like the Green Bay defense just stopped playing. It, it looked like in. I the think last they stopped to see game, where it was gonna land. They didn't try and get it themselves. It's like, where's this gonna go? They don't know. Exactly. I mean, I, it looked like the Green Bay Packers just in the last four minutes of that game in, in overtime. It looked like they just stopped playing. Yeah. It looked like Seattle had broke their backs and they just stopped playing. Yeah, and I th- I thought it, I, okay, finish what I was gonna say about the pa- that uh, one pass, that two point conversion pass. I think everybody that wasn't a Seahawk player would just stopped to see where that ball was gonna go, and I think that's why Green Bay did not do anything about it because they were shocked. It's like, wait, he seriously threw that? <laughs> I I wish I recorded my reaction to that uh, two point conversion because I was laughing very loudly. I, I laughed like, a little bit, but I was more of like, holy shit, I jumped off my seat, and I was like, oh god, is this what it's like to be a Seattle fan? I'm not I mean, even a Seattle fan, but that, wow. I was rooting for Seattle, not, let's not lie here, I was rooting for Seattle because... Well, yeah, we both know, picked them, and <laughs> we don't like Green Bay. I don't, I don't want to see Green Bay in the Super Bowl, because... The only NFC North team I want to see in the Super Bowl is the Lions. Well, I have to, like two teams I want to li- see. If it's not the Lions, then it's not anyone from the NFC North. I don't want anyone else from the NFC North to get in there, <laughs> including Chicago or Minnesota. <laughs> if it's not Detroit, it's no one else from our division. <laughs> and I'm glad that Seattle won. I, I can't wait for an actual good Super Bowl because if it was New England, Green Bay... I, I it, the, all the debate England, of who's the greatest of all time, would just New England. Yeah, I, not only that, but I mean, New England isn't even the same team that Green Bay fought, faced earlier. They're just on a different planet right now. Yeah. Why am I but, yawning so much? What I feel is. The thing that lost Green Bay the game the most was in the middle of that game. What did they go away from doing? The run. They stopped running the football. And they started passing like crazy. And they didn't put up any points. And then there was that one who was like third and five. I know Rodgers tends to get those quick throws easy. It seems nobody can stop them most of the time unless the players drop it and still ask for a flag, too, by the way. Oh, don't oh my Okay, God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quote somebody who what they tweeted on earlier. Yep. Let me find it. He said, let's see what he said. Up two possessions? Let's stop running and not burn the clock with the picture of a, th- a thumbs up. And then somebody put it uh, uh, replied to him saying, "Sounds like a McCarthy-led football team." <laughs> and I mean, uh, wasn't that wasn't that all too true? You have you have a 16-point lead. You I have every intention of making the Super Bowl. You have the Seattle Seahawks, the defending champions on the ropes and you can drive a dagger through their heart by running the football and keep picking up first downs and keeping that clock moving and you stick your, the own the dagger that was meant for the Seahawks into your own cheese head <laughs> oh I mean, man I mean seriously the 
the thing that was going to win you the game is running the football and passing when you need to. And they were passing way too much. Aaron Rodgers is only human. He can only do so much. And, I mean, it might have cemented his legacy to bring his team back from when they were down 22 to 19 after that two-point conversion to kick that field goal because without him, they wouldn't even get down that field and they wouldn't have even had a chance at the tie. Yeah. But now, what separated that game, I'm sure you're going to say this as well as I am, what separated that game and made it one of our top five football games we've ever watched is the, what happened in overtime. Those two consecutive deep ball throws that both connected. The first one got them an important first down, and the second one was the touchdown. Yep. The now, crowd went nuts. It, yes. it insane. He took it all the way, and it worked. That now, does not they, happen every day, off, so often in overtime, and in the playoffs, no less. Now, think of what happened prior to that. Russell Wilson's quarterback rating. Just, just think. His quarterback rating out of 152 point something was almost zero. After... Now, you throw the, the first three quarters and the uh, start of the fourth quarter out, and you have a quarterback rating of over 100? That's why that game's so great. He was historically bad in the first half of that game. First, really, most of that game. And then he has the all-time redemption story of coming back and sticking it to a team that should have beat him. Yeah. And you know what I, that makes me remember? There's that fourth, it was on a third down, third and long, I think third and 19, because he took a big time sack. Yep. But um, this was on the drive that led to that fake field goal that was for a touch, the first touchdown. He got a lot of time. He got it right on the money to his, I think it was Doug Baldwin. I want to say it was Doug Baldwin. Got that first down. That started the trend. That started the comeback. If that one did not connect, this, we wouldn't be talking about this being the greatest game ever. We would have been talking about how the, these, these championships were so boring and so one-sided. But at least the NFC put on a show at the end. I, I feel like five of the six NFC teams were really well matched. Detroit, Dallas, Carolina, surprisingly, Arizona. Seattle, and uh, Green Bay. All all five of them were e evenly matched. Arizona, Arizona's nothing without Carson Palmer. It might have been more and, fun if they had at least Drew Stanton. Yeah. They, I feel if they had Drew Stan, they would have at least put up a fight against Carolina. Maybe pulled out an upset have... with the way that Carolina turned the ball over. It, if this were any other team, they would have lost that game by a two by a two score uh, number, by by ten. I feel the NFC side was the most balanced overall, and the AFC side had one great team. New England, though, to be fair, at least Indy did a big a big shocker against uh, Denver. Yeah, and uh, and the mean, New England-Baltimore game was a great one, even though I slept in the fourth I mean, quarter. Really, if you if you really looked at the AFC side, you were like, okay, New England's coming out of the AFC, and the NFC, you had no idea. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's a case that you could make for five teams, and uh, really all six. I mean, really, if Arizona does well, then the second week in the playoffs, they would have had stand back, and God knows what happens. Uh, Detroit. Probably wouldn't have I beat mean, them. I mean, it, all, these, all these scenarios, 
you could make a case for about five teams in the NFC. You could only make a case for one in the AFC. And I, I didn't feel like Denver. I didn't feel like Denver was on match up with New England. Well, I felt Denver had the best shot against like teams like Baltimore or Cincinnati. The only like one New I England thought that had a chance was because of their record in the postseason, Baltimore, because Baltimore does not joke around in the playoffs. True. And they've beaten, uh, they've beaten uh, New England. They should have beat them twice, actually. But then there is that really terrible, less than 30-yard field goal. <laughs> it was an 18-yard field goal, and you missed that. Yeah. I remember that, and that was the subject of radio shows for days. How <laughs> did you miss that? I, I, I really don't know. How hey, I was okay that. with it. I was okay with it. But, um... I mean... So was I. I mean, I, I like watching good Super Bowls. I don't want to watch a terrible Super Bowl. And I feel like this Super Bowl is going to be really good. But that's a subject for a different a different football. You brought talks. up, though, an interesting thing I wanted to mention. You mentioned it with, like, top five games. I'm going to come out and say it. I didn't care. I don't like either of these teams that much. Well, I especially don't like Green Bay. I'm okay with Seattle a little bit. But that had to have been a good number two on on my top five games I've ever watched. I've lived to see, I should say, to be specific. I'm not counting games from the past that I wasn't born to see or too young to see or just ne and just never saw because I was too young. I rarely knew shit about football. And that was... That was this game. This was a good, solid number two. I can tell you right off the top of my head, my number five, number four. My number five was the Denver-Dallas game of last year, despite how yeah. Dallas lost, and I thought they should have won. It was still a great game. Had to be on the edge of my seat. Number four, that game where Matt Schaub went down in the playoffs against uh, Bengals, and TJ8 stepped up, and they blew out the uh, Bengals. I can't remember what would be number three, but Bill, you might be surprised what's my number one. What? It was this year. Oh. The New York, oh. or not New York, New Orleans Saints against the Detroit Lions. Hmm. The game where it was all but over in a, a third and long Golden Tate is down the field, or get he gets a first down, Golden Tate is down the sidelines. Golden Tate has a Lions touchdown. Yeah. That... Hmm. Was probably one of the best plays ever. But anyway, before we move on to the Pro Bowl talks, I want to make one other thing. I really hope Richard Sherman got a uh, a uh, game ball. You you remember that key third down? Which if they if Sherman could not stop that guy, he would have got a first down. That play, like the Packers would have been still built alive and probably got the touchdown. He wrestled down. I forget. I don't know who it was. Maybe it was Randall Cobb or it was a tight end. He wrestled him yep. down with a sprained arm. He yeah, still that... played with a sprained arm. Bill, that is football. You hurt. You're hurting. You're still going in there to take to I... win the game. That's football. I, mean, I I appreciate people that go out of their way. He he proved why he's great no matter no he he was hurt he still came out there he performed at a high level and he backed up his talk no matter if he was hurt or not that team responds to Richard Sherman and Richard Sherman coming out playing hurt is an inspiration to a team because he wants it that much. He wants to win. He doesn't want to lose. He wants to be a champion again. And that's why Most I won't be surprised. I won't be too down if the Seattle Seahawks win back to back. Because of that, and there's something Most... else. But I want you to finish. Most teams would have packed their tent and gave up after being down. Most players would have been like, "Oh, I can't get back in, coach." Even our own players I that mean... we like, they probably wouldn't. I mean, the, that team never gave up, and to see that fight in that team, that proves why they're champions, 
and that proves why this Super Bowl is going to be an amazing Super Bowl because no matter how far down Seattle could be or how far down New England could be, both teams are going to fight like hell to get back in the game, and it's not going to be a close one-point game, I feel. <laughs> well, that that's, that's interesting. So, uh, but again, I'm not going to go there until yeah. our actual talk about. It. Yeah, and lastly, Russell Wilson. You saw that interview. It was we had two types of emotional interviews after that the ch- NFC Championship. The one was Sherman being all pumped up and people were calling him a thug and shit, and then we had Russell Wilson crying because he's so happy that he came out and pulled off the comeback. And you know what's the, the good part? I'm amazed. I haven't heard any anybody calling him a crybaby, especially because he's, you know, a guy and all that shit. But social subjects aside, I'm amazed nobody's been saying that any bad things because he came out there crying. Because he, he has damn right to be crying tears of joy. Because not many people, not many teams, and not many players alone can can pull off a comeback like that. If that doesn't I mean, go in like the top ten, top fifteen greatest comebacks in NFL history in the playoffs, at least, I don't know what's wrong with those people that don't put it there. I mean, he played abysmally poor, and to come out and win a game like that, I don't blame you for being emotional because I would be emotional too if I threw four interceptions and felt like I cost the team. A chance at going for your dream. You you know, players dream about winning multiple titles. That's, I mean, literally every every kid has you know when you're when you're young you're like, I want to be the greatest football player that ever lived. And when you think of greatness, you think of multiple titles. Bill Russell with the Celtics in the '60s. He won eight straight titles with the Boston Celtics. And that's why they have Greatness. arguably, I think they have the most uh, f- uh, trophies ever. I think they have 25% yes. of them. That's crazy. I mean, they won like eight, eight in a row. It, it was some crazy number like that. And then, the Montreal Canadiens, they won like seven in a row. But why do people remember those teams? Multiple championships in multiple years. Why Why are the Patriots on a different pedestal than other teams in this in the league, including Green Bay? The league, it is. A, I think won, it's a lot harder to win in football because most of the time they, they won, have multiple games. You know what I mean? Like you have game one through seven. Yeah. Football, you only got one chance, and any it can go to the game can go to shit even bef- even like in the first quarter, it's all over. But um, yeah. I'm. I mean, why else do you think? You know, what, I think the I think there are gonna be some teams that you won't think about it now, but later on you're gonna remember the the what they've done. The Patriots are one of them. Seattle has the opportunity to become that if they win this back to back. And then I mean, other Indianapolis, teams. Indianapolis. Indianapolis too. With Peyton. Indianapolis in the mid 2000s, probably some of the greatest teams ever assembled. Yeah, and some of them say, oh, there's no way Indy can go because they have no defense. Still won one. I mean, they still won one, and they won one with a Hall of Fame quarterback. Yeah, what? and it's not even just limited to football. Other teams, other groups, like you were saying, the Celtics. Well, recent history, I know I'm bragging about my favorite team in basketball, but the Spurs, five trophies in 15 years. It's like a three, they have a three-year average of winning them. So I mean... But. The last 16 years for the Spurs, the that's a dynasty. That is a dynasty, and I'm glad to be a fan of it and living through it. Because Tim Duncan's going to retire sooner or later, and so, sooner my, it'll be Parker and Ginobili, but I'm not afraid. My Pistons, which in mid-2000s won one title, lost to the Spurs in another, <laughs> but Sorry, they Bill. made six... They made six straight Eastern Conference Finals. Yeah. Not even not even Michael Jordan's Bulls did that. Yeah, and he's a legend. I mean, had, had he not retired, he would have won eight straight titles. In fact, fun fact, your Houston Rockets in between, 
were the team that were in between uh, those in Chicago Bulls titles. They won the two in between the Chicago Bulls three each. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Did they have that? What's that guy's name with the word? He he had those commercials. He's like, not in my house. No, no, no. No, no. They had another guy by the name of Hakeem Olajuwon. Wow. That is a weird name. Uh, uh, Hakeem Olajuwon came from Africa as well. Oh my! God. <laughs> uh, another another great African player. The one you're thinking of is Dikembe Mutombo, and he played for the Denver, uh, the Denver Nuggets, amongst other teams. He's a fan of JJ Watt, but Watt is so small compared to that guy. Dikembe Mutombo is like seven foot four or something. Yeah, and, crazy and the like most that. the tallest player before that. Or in our recent years, in looking at the NBA, with Shaq at seven foot one. I remember a guy in the no, well. Before we go, and this is the last player I'm gonna mention is George Mirasan. He was seven foot eight. God he damn it! The, he played in the late uh, '90s for the uh, Washington Wizards. That's that's a uh, oh man, that's crazy. Where did they, where do people come? Where do these people come from? They're they're Mirasan was European. Genetics loved them. Uh, uh, anyway, let's move on to uh, more football stuff. But uh, it's good talking about basketball because it's basketball season right now, and I'll be shifting yep. towards that once uh, once all the football's over. Just, well, at least for the Spurs because I don't care about any other team. Uh, I'm so terrible. But anyway, so <laughs> Pro Bowl uh, things have changed. I will mention some players that are out. Sadly, Arian Foster and Megatron are out with injuries, but. Yep. In return, uh, one Houston Texan, albeit it's a different, uh, it's a different type of player, and one, uh, a one wide receiver for the Lions who is long overdue, and a secondary player who is also long overdue. Who I get, I have him as my possible, um, as my possible defensive player of the year. He's here. Oh, I will mention them now. So starting off with the. Uh, Oh, we'll start off with the quarterbacks. Matthew Stafford is replacing Peyton Manning in the Pro Bowl, despite how... Bill, I'll let you say it. I'm not going to take your words. Despite the year that he had, this was... The the years that he should have went to the Pro Bowl, he didn't and got snubbed. The year that he doesn't deserve to go to the Pro Bowl, he gets to go. I, I just don't get that sort of concept. Yeah, I don't either. Anyway, so, finally the fanboys of New York can shut the hell up because Odell Beckham's going. Not that I care, but I just wanted to take a jab at the Giants fan base. Sorry, I'm a, I'm a Cowboys fan. What do you expect? Anyway, so, <laughs> with with uh, Megatron's absence, Golden Tate, my, my possible offensive player of the year, is going to be replacing him. And to be fair, really, Calvin Johnson didn't belong to be in that game anyway. And Golden Tate did because he did more. Oh yeah, and a lot of yards I mean, after the catch, as I keep mentioning. And I, I, I'm a huge Calvin Johnson guy. I'm a Detroit Lions guy through and through. But he just didn't have the Pro Bowl year. You know, he didn't have the the years he's he's had. Bill, Bill, get me a Golden Tate jersey for my birthday. Just saying. <laughs> oh man. I'll I'll go get you uh I'll get you a Megatron jersey in return maybe. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> anyway, continuing on. On the uh d on the uh, to finish off the offensive side, Dwayne Brown is replacing Jason Peters from the Eagles. And he's gonna be their star, the star left tackle for the offensive line. Thankfully, this this is now his third Pro Bowl, which nice. I'm glad he made it because Dwayne Brown is a great guy. I I listen to his also, his radio show too. Nice, heck yeah. Yeah. Anyway, on to the defensive side. Before we get to the other player, I should note J.J. Watt is one of the captains for this year. And that's nice. awesome. Well, let's be real. I thought it was going to happen whether they said so or not. Everybody on the defense is going to treat him like a captain. 
I mean, really, he's one of the few people that didn't decline to go, and he actually likes going to the Pro Bowl. Well, yeah, it's like, well, I'm not in the playoffs. I want more fun. I want more games. Anyway, uh, I have something to mention about J.J. Watt, which you may or may not know, Bill, but we'll talk. I'll talk about it later. Anyway, finally, Glover Quinn is joining the Pro Bowl, which he deserves because he's got seven interceptions this year. He was going on a roll of a pick each game at one point, up till yeah. the uh, up till the the Packers game, maybe the game before that. They, who did he replace? No, he just got added. I think because Sherman is oh. out. But Sherman's oh, yeah. a center back, but Glover Quinn's a safety. Yeah, I don't no, get it the, they, they can use those interchangeably, really. Yeah, so that makes sense. It's, so that's why Sherman's out. Plus, he's got a, he's got a sprained elbow, so <laughs> that's the way he could go. I mean, the other thing is, is both, both players from the Patriots and the Seahawks will not go to the Pro Bowl. Yeah, so I expect to be uh, to hear a few more changes like Darrell Rivas and probably a uh, Gustowski for the, are going to be yep. going out. Even though really does does it matter if Gustowski goes or not? It's a kicker. Gus, Gostkowski is not is not allowed to go. Oh wow. Yeah, so I'm I'm hoping that Dan Bailey replaces him. Because I swear, Most if it's likely. another if it's another player like a Packers kicker or another Colts kicker, which both the punter and the kicker for the, for the Colts are going, I mean, it's like at least put Hauschka if you're not gonna put Bailey. But anyway, I mean, but Hauschka was well, Hauschka's in the Super Bowl, so he can't go. Oh yeah, he is going. Yeah, he can't go. Well, yeah. So uh, looks like well, yeah, yeah. You can't send. Can we send Alex Henry to just laugh? <laughs> I don't. I don't know. So yeah, um, yeah. Tom Brady's off the list and all that, but we all know that shit already. Anyway, so Bill, what do you think of the new additions and subtractions of from the Pro Bowl? To be, to be fair, I kind of expected a bunch of subtractions because a lot of players don't like going to the Pro Bowl. I feel the Pro Bowl is really kind of useless. I mean, it I mean, it gives you an exhibition game, but really none of the pl- If you if if you want to play the Pro Bowl, I feel like they should just make it a flag football game on television, you know. <laughs> so that way I, it, it feels like a flag football game. Why make it a tackle football game if it's if it's that way at least Players will go and play on and play in it for one. Yeah, some for still want to go. It, it's good for the players who didn't who didn't go on winning teams, like say, um, what's it? What is a good example? Like say, there's some Jets players and there's a Raider player, which yeah, their teams kind of sucked, but uh, hey, at least the talented ones who deserve you know more screen time, you could say, get another opportunity what? to show show us their moves, show me your moves. Yeah, I mean. Sorry, I gotta get Captain Falcon joke in there. <laughs> it's all good. I I appreciate a good Captain Falcon joke, but uh, I feel like the Pro Bowl needs a lot of reworking, and I feel like the subtractions were almost guaranteed to happen. The additions, some of them make sense, and some of them, I mean. Some of them make a lot of sense, like uh, you know, uh, Glover Quinn. He he kind of got snubbed. Hey, how do you think I feel with Golden know, Tate? Yeah, Golden Tate got snubbed. Well, now big he's here. Time. He was he was the most important receiver on the Lions last year, and that that's hard for me to say. Yeah. And that's because everybody says that uh, Megatron's the most important piece. Um, I think both. The wide receivers are an important piece. Just wait, just wait until next year when they're both healthy. Yeah. For the entire year. Yeah. Anyway, so I I am kind of glad that more players that I was hoping to get in are in. But I might watch this game. But I'm gonna wait to see how the draft goes. I'm gonna root for the team JJ Watson. Oh man, which. Obviously, when we're recording this, the teams have not been picked yet. Yeah, so we can't make a pick. So there are no picks this week. We just have uh, one last thing, which...
You want to transition into that? I'm fine with it. All right. Just to note, since I mentioned J.J. Watt, uh, to I don't know if you can watch it on the internet anywhere. I'm pretty sure NBC might show it, but yesterday, uh, at least Sunday, they had a, a interview with J.J. Watt about what he's doing, and then it just bummed me out when I found out that Aaron Rodgers was the final nominee for the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award. Well, I mean, he does do a lot with uh, childhood cancer, which is a very good area for a lot of research and funding, and it, it deserves to have a person of his stature, too. Uh, yeah, but he's going to win it over these other players, too, kind of deserve it, too. I don't know. I mean, re really all of them deserve it, but... Uh, I just don't want him to win everything, every... <laughs> Now watch, next year he's somehow going to win the Defensive Player of the Year now. I mean... I don't know. I, w I would rather him win the award for something that deserve deserves the attention that it needs to have mm -hmm, focused on it. You know? Yeah, yeah. Because that is a dreaded thing, and a lot of, a lot of families go through that, and I... I I, I would hope that he would win. I really hope that they would all would win because a lot of inner city kids that a lot of those other ones are associated with also don't get a lot of publicity. And I feel like yeah, I, it's good that even they were nominated, it still brings to light what they're doing. Yep. I was really hoping the finalist would be Andre Johnson, though, because he has one that helps with it. I think the house with women, abused women, and uh, women's shelters. Yeah, I mean, uh, like like we've all said at the very beginning of the year, a lot of football players do a lot of good in the NFL, and then there's some boneheaded morons that do some really stupid things in the NFL. Ray Rice. Yeah, Ray Rice and Adrian Peterson. Yep. Amongst but I hope uh, you should ch try and find that video. I might link it to you after this this uh. We're done recording, but it's it's a good listen, and it actually talked about a couple stories that I knew about beforehand, which I thought was awesome because Watt is a good guy. It's like you know, it's like how do I just say it? You know how like say there's a s oh, well, let's just go with this. He's either you're either a good player, but you're a bad person, or you're a good person, but you're not exactly great. He's one of those few that are just in between. Like, you can tell the guy's a good guy, but, I mean, you don't want to play him on the field because he'll just throw you to the ground. But He, uh, he knows where the switch is. Yeah. And it's like, there's players like him, and I want to say Tom Brady, because people are saying Tom Brady is, like, like his, the former teammates say he's a great guy. It's just a shame that we just see him more as, like, the player than the person. If that makes any yeah, sense. You, I mean... He lives a very private life, and a lot of really high-profile Hall of Fame athletes kind of have to yeah. live that private life. Yeah, they, they always give the shift to those players that have the, the me attitude, like Aaron Rodgers. Because Rodgers is aware that he's talented. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, and that's why I mean, you don't like him. I, I really despise... I'll put it this way. Aaron Rodgers wouldn't despise... I wouldn't despise him so much if it wasn't for all the whining, this, you know, this expect to win. I mean, every team expects to win, but you don't have to go out and, you know, put it out there all the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, to me, it's like how he gets that more... Of the more of the limelight over the people who are actually like you know, they're good and they're more humble, makes no sense to me. You get what I mean? Yep. Yep. Anyway, so with uh, with all that said, let's uh, let's move on to our little grading section. Because New England won, we're saving them for the very what I would call the technical finale of this of this podcast. And uh, we're gonna go talk about Dallas now, as much as Bill probably doesn't want to talk about it. <laughs> so, are you ready, Bill? I'm ready. All right, so I'll start us off since this is the team I, I also like. Or do you want to go first, Bill? And do you want to hear my thoughts on this? 
Uh, we may as well, since I'm probably going to talk about New England. No, actually, I'll let you talk about New England first when we get to that point. Yeah. All right. I was say. All right, since these are my Texas teams, I'll go first. Anyway, so Dallas, I'm rating from an offensive view. I'm giving them an A. Aside from when Tony Roma was gone and was really like a a wooden <laughs> statue, I thought that they played really solid. What are you laughing about, Bill? Brandon Whedon. <laughs> yeah, let let's be real. The Jenga piece was Romo. Oh, I know that it's it's kind yeah. of a universal role with quarterbacks these days, but my God, I'm pretty sure all the Romo haters had to shut up that day. It's like I think we all know. I think I think we now figured out Romo's an important player to this team. Yeah, with, without Romo, oh my. God. Everything falls. They are a, like a one in a one in fifteen team. <laughs> yeah, the, without Romo, They're... they were just stacking the box on Demarco Murray. Yeah, which the thing that made Murray good is that they had the passing game that was great. So I give. Yep. Speaking of Romo, I'm giving him an A plus because I think he did he did great, and it's finally the the reason. The reason why it was he had trouble before was because there was so much pressure on him. It was hard to protect him. And now there's an offensive line that can do that. The best offensive line in the league. And I mean count add in what Romo can avoid sacks when you give if if he's in the right spot. Which as long as you're defending him well enough and he can see someone coming, he can get out of the way. Which the proof of that was when he dodged JJ Watts somehow and throwing that touchdown pass to Terrence Williams. So I give him yep. an A plus because I thought he was great. Now the defense, ah, oh, the defense. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a B minus. I that might be considered generous. You think I should give it a C? But I just have to remember with what happened last year. That was the th the one of the worst offenses in league or not offense defenses in league history. Considering it went from worst ever to hit the world. And face national uh, national look or the the national TVs and all that shit to go to a mediocre defense that can get the job done for the most part. I think that's a very good improvement because, well, not many teams could do that. Right. So, and since you graded special teams, Bill, now I have to. I feel I have to do this. Special teams, I give it a. Uh, I just give it a C plus. I did okay. I'd give it a B, like a B to a B minus. If Dan Bailey was, right when I kept praising him too, I think I'm jinxing him. I'm gonna stop talking about him after this, because he just kept missing. Kicker, kickers do better when you don't mention their names. Yeah. So yeah, I would give them a C, a C, a C plus. Anyway, Bill, it's your turn. Try and keep your anger out of this one for the most part. <laughs> All right, I'm giving their offense an A minus, and really, I, I feel that the offensive line was real. It was really good at some points, and then it failed at some other times. And there was a few games where it failed. One of the games was against the Washington football team that got Tony Romo hurt. They were blitzing every down, and they didn't make any adjustments to it. And they just kept doing the same thing over and over again. And But overall, I mean, DeMarco Murray ran for the most yards in his career. Des Bryant had another career year. Tony they all Romo, broke. They all broke records. Tony Romo did a ma uh, did a good job with the team, which w which everyone in Dallas probably thought, oh, this team's on a choke. We all did this too. This team's on a choke. <laughs> this team's on a choke, and they didn't choke. Uh, I think that what happened in Green Bay wasn't a matter of them choking, though. Yep. Because honestly, uh, I wanted to see Dallas get the ball one more time just to see what would happen. But overall, the offense did really well, and I give them an A minus. Now the defense, on the other hand, I am giving. 
last year, had we done this, I would have given them, like, an F- minus or a Z. I, it, it, that was probably the worst defense I've you ever seen. You could have just said play. a zero, a flat zero. A flat zero. That I mean, I would put a dash mark there to be unrated. It's, like, off the charts bad. So, yeah. But I, I went from that to this year giving them a D+. Plus. And... The reason why it's a D-plus is I felt that with the offense, they kind of hid the defense. And when the defense was exposed, they got exposed and beat down. And I want to see Sean Lee come back because with Sean Lee, that, that defense goes from a D-plus to a C. Add at in least. Rolando McLean and you've got yourself a add nice... In, um... Add in Rolando. Add in, Sca uh, add in not Scandrick. Scandrick's kind of overrated, but... You sound like uh, my grandpa. Rolando, add in Church, add in Sean Lee, and then you start drafting secondary and defensive linemen. I think they need to draft a defensive the lineman first. I think they need yeah, pressure. You, they need a big pressure guy. That was, that was their big... That was their big flaw. What I felt like a lot of teams did, and why Dallas cause as many turnovers as they did is that they forced the football into areas for their best receiver against that defense. Yeah. And I feel like that that's why they even came up with any of those turnovers. I they they weren't particularly good. It was just they were in the right place at the right time. And that's always a good thing. Did I but, ever I say mean, my overall grade? I don't think I did. I think you said a B? No, that was the defense. Oh. I never gave it, but finish finish your thing and I'll give my overall. My, uh, but overall, the defense can be better. It can be improved. Oh, definitely. And with better scheme, uh, definitely it will improve. Uh, it, the offense might not because they might not have DeMarco, but that's for a later podcast. Yeah. Next up, special teams, I gave them a B. Uh, Dan Bailey is a really damn good kicker. They they really didn't commit too many mistakes on special teams. They didn't really do anything bad on special teams. They didn't do anything amazing on special teams. They were average to great on special teams, and they just show up. So I, I give the special teams a B, uh, the coaching and overall. So coaching, I'm giving them a B minus. Jason Garrett was a decent coach. I mean, he's no Bill Belichick. He never will be, but he's decent enough to get the job done. I can see why Dallas would keep him around. Why they uh, gave him a thirty million dollar instead of like twenty million? I don't get it. Or not a, not for it's, five years. For th why didn't they give him for three? Because five is a little too much. Yeah, I, I I feel like this year was more the play calling of the offensive coordinator winning them games than the actual head coach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, but really, I wouldn't and want Rex Ryan in my place. <laughs> I mean, who would? But <laughs> well, the Buffalo over. Bills did. Anyway, yeah, go on. Well, they uh, they also they also hired Jim Schwartz. So I mean, <laughs> uh, anyway, continue, Bill. Overall, I give the Dallas Cowboys a B. They had a really good season. It was a season I didn't expect, and I feel like uh, that they could be on their way to a lower record next year, but that's, again, for a later podcast. But I feel like they're going to be around in the playoff hunt next year as well. Yep. So I give them an overall of a B. They, they, really, the thing that they need to work on is their defense. I give them the overall grade of a B plus only because the lack of the lack of uh, defense really hurts, and really, it's mostly the pressure. They need if the, if they could just get one, if they could only get one defensive player, but he's good enough to make quarterbacks be afraid, and be make them think I need to get the ball out off my hands quicker. That's all you need. You just need someone that just can 
make quarterbacks be like be in a hurry. That's all they need really on defense. Exactly. And the secondary can really, take care of the rest. Really, if they had more pressure, my my grade from defense would be a C plus. And had they done more overall on defense and been like top fifteen, they would have gotten a B minus from me. I mean, they're close to being a good defense. They just need need no. some rushing. Yeah. They didn't they didn't recover a lot of fumbles this year either. They it seemed like they were getting picks or nothing. You know? Yeah, and they're not to like live Houston. By the pick is the, yeah, like Houston. They uh, they they just turn you over every different way. I can't also, I really hope they continue that trend. But we'll yeah, talk about that next week. Houston yeah, we'll talk about next week. But I mean I, I feel like they could have been a B minus this year had they done two more things better. And they would have been a B minus in my book. Hmm. I'm a generous person. But uh <laughs> Anyway, so is there anything else you want to add, Bill? Because we have no picks. Overall, I feel that the overall playoffs have been exciting. There's been tons of controversy for two teams. Yeah. And then when the team that needed the second round of controversy, even though I feel that that was a correct call, I don't know. It was correct in the way the rules were interpreted, is what and I'm trying to say. And that's why the rules need to change. Exactly. That's why the rules need to change for not only that, the rules need to help. We would have won that game against Chicago had that rule not existed. <laughs> yeah, which... I, I, totally, I totally empathize with them, but if it happened to my team, it's got to happen to everyone else. And, I mean... Yeah. Until that until that rule gets changed, I'm not going to go away from it. I mean, if my team loses a game when he's across the goal line and he puts the football down, then why does anyone else get different, you know, treatment, you know? But overall, it's been an amazing playoff run with a lot of that miscellaneous bullshit that should never happen because <laughs> the referees are... Garbage. Did you notice that those other refs were nowhere to be seen in the last three weeks of the playoffs? Yeah, good. I mean, they they were, like, sent off to some island to never be heard from again. I mean, they just... They were there, and then they were not there anymore. <laughs> Especially both, both crews. Well, aren't you okay with that? I'm 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 fine with that. I never want to see Pete Morelli ever officiate another Detroit Lions <laughs> game ever again. <laughs> ever. Uh, well, anyway, I don't have much to say aside from I still thought that Green Bay Seattle game was the best game, one of the best games I have ever seen. Yeah, but, I mean, conference championship weekend for one game was prob I mean literally the, it was such a great game that they had to push the Patriots game back 10 minutes. Yeah, because of overtime. Yep, because of the overtime. Uh, uh, and what? and theoretically that game could have kept going. Yeah. For as long as it infinite. takes. Yep. Till somebody puts some points on the board. But anyway, I think that'll do for this week's football talks. We will see you in between uh we'll see you next week when we discuss the big one in the penultimate video of football talks for the season oh man oh bill God. next week we will be here to talk about the super bowl pre to preview the super bowl i should say might even talk yep. a little bit about the pro bowl like maybe how some players that we care for did because i'm really exactly. hoping jj watt has a monster day <laughs> last year he did a surf. Know. Last year he did a surfboard thing. So I'm. I really want to know what he was gonna do for Arizona. I mean, hopefully they allow them to dance, and not give stupid penalties out in freaking Pro Bowl. 
It's like they're, they're, they're pro. They're, it's it's a bunch of pros. They know how to act, and they just want to have you fun know, today. They don't get chances like this you, very often. You, and one last thing. You know who's not going to make the Pro Bowl who? as referee? Who? Peeperelli. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's fun. Anyway. I mean, what? seriously. I hope I hope JJ Watt goes and gives one of the referees glasses. And, you know. That way, it's like here. This is how you call a game. Give them just these giant ass bifocals. <laughs> well, anyway, that's gonna do it for this week. We'll see you guys. We preview the Super Bowl. See you guys later.